The table above summarizes the results of 200 law school graduates who took the bar exam. If one of the surveyed graduates who passed the bar exam is chosen at random for an interview, what is the probability that the person chosen did not take the review course? So for these types of questions, they're also testing how well you can read a chart or a table given to you. So the question asks, if one of the surveyed graduates who passed the bar exam is chosen at random for an interview. So for these types of problems, I like to kind of go piece by piece through the question. So first we wanna find out the students who passed the bar exam. So that's this column right here, okay? So one of these 25 students, 18 plus seven, ones who took the review course and didn't take it, was chosen at random for the interview. And out of these 25 students, we want to know what is the probability that the person did not take the review course? So then all we have to do, if we know there's a total of 25 students who passed the bar exam and seven did not take the review course, then the probability that the person did not take the review course and they passed the bar exam would be seven out of a total of 25 who passed the bar exam. And that corresponds to answer B. The atomic weight of an unknown element in atomic mass units is approximately 20% less than that of calcium. The atomic weight of calcium is 40 AMU. Which of the following best approximates the atomic weight in AMU of the unknown element? Okay, so we know the atomic weight of calcium is 40 AMU. And we want to find the weight of the unknown atomic element that's approximately weighing 20% less than calcium. So when we say 20% less, it means also that the atomic weight of the unknown element is 80% of the weight of calcium. So then all we have to do is do 40 AMU times 0 0.8, 80%, and then that would give us a result of 32 AMU for the unknown element. So of course for this problem, you could also do first 40 and then see that the weight of the atomic element that's unknown is approximately 20% less than that of calcium. So then you would do minus 0.2, which is 20% of calcium, to find out how much the unknown element weighs, which is 32 AMU. So you can see you can solve this question one of two ways, whichever one you find convenient. And so the answer that matches 32 AMU is answer choice C. Question 18 reads, a survey was taken of the value of homes in a county and it was found that the mean home value was 165000 and the median home value was 125000 Which of the following situations could explain the difference between the mean and median home values in the county? So we know that for a distribution that's symmetrical, the mean and median value should be the same. So then, for example, let's say our distribution looks something like a normal distribution. And if it's symmetrical, then we know that the mean is here, and the median, which is the 50th percentile of all the values, would also be at the same place. However, if there are outliers, then we know that the mean will be pulled one way, while the median stays the same. For example, if this value was 100 in the symmetrical distribution, but then it changed to be 1,000 in our new distribution, we can see all the way over here, then the mean would be pulled towards the right, pulled towards this larger outlier, while the median would still stay in the same location as it was before. So let's read through our answer choices and see which one would account for the fact that the mean value would be larger than the median value. And in that case, we, we can probably see that there are outliers in our data that are higher towards the... Um, the more expensive end. And answer choice D is incorrect because if many of the homes have values between 125,000 and 165,000, then we can assume that their mean and median would be between these values rather than being at these values because the median is at the 50th percentile and the mean is the average of all the values. So then our most reasonable choice would be answer C. Question 19 and 20 both have to do with this table and chart we're given. It reads, a sociologist chose 300 students at random from each of two schools and asked each student how many siblings he or she has. The results are shown in the table below. There are a total of 2,400 students at Lincoln School and 3,300 students at Washington School. So let's first look at question 19. 
What is the median number of siblings for all the students surveyed? So question 19 asks, what is the median number of siblings for all the students surveyed? So we know that the median is the middle value when you order all of your data points from either an increasing or decreasing order. So in this case, our total number of data points would be 600 because the sociologist chooses 300 students at random from each of the two schools. So 300 students times two schools is 600 students total. And for this, we know that out of 600 data points, the middle data point will be between the 300th and 301st data points. So that means that when we sort them in order, we can find out what's the median number of the siblings of the students surveyed from how many data points we have. So because we want to know the median number of siblings for all the students, across each row we can add the values up. So then total, the amount of students with zero siblings would be 260, the amount of students with one sibling would be 190, and so on and so forth. So we know that data points 1 through 260 are zero siblings, and that data points 261 to data points 450 will be one sibling. So if we know that this, the number of one siblings is from data points 261 to 450, then we know that the 300th and 301st data point will be somewhere in this range. So then we know that the median number of siblings will be one, and that corresponds with answer choice B. Question 20 reads, based on the survey data, which is the following, which of the following most accurately compares the expected total number of students with four siblings at the two schools? So using the information from the chart at the upfront, we know that there can't be the same number of students with four siblings at the two schools if we follow the proportions uh, accordingly given to us in the chart because there are more students at the Washington School than the Lincoln School. So there are 3,300 students at Washington School as opposed to the 2,400 students at Lincoln School. So what we want to do here is try to estimate how many students there would be with four siblings if we continue with the proportions given us to the chart and the, popu the size of the sample, the 300 students at random from each of the two schools. So we can see here for Lincoln School, there are 10 students with four siblings out of 300 students chosen at random from that school. And we know that for Washington School, there are 10 students out of the 300 students surveyed at random. So these numbers would be the same. These proportions would be the same. So we can simplify by getting rid of these zeros. So the proportion is 1 30th for both schools. So 1 30th of their school's population should have four siblings. However, because each school has a different amount of students total, that means that even though their proportion is the same, the number of students from each school with four siblings isn't the same. So for Lincoln School, the school has a total of 2,400 students and the amount of students with four siblings would be one out of 30 of that number. So then that would give you 80 students. At Washington School, we have a total of 3,300 students, and we want to take the proportion one out of 30 students who have four siblings from that, and then we would get a total of 110 students. So we can see at Washington School, We have 30 more students with four siblings than we do at Lincoln School with 80 students if we follow the proportions and the population size. So the answer that corresponds to that would be C, which is the total number of students with four siblings at Washington School is expected to be 30 more than at Lincoln School. So for these, you also have to be careful because uh, many of the answer choices look pretty similar and it's just the wording that's different. So be sure not to be tripped up on that and be careful of the labels and the numbers that you see in the problem and in the answer. So in the questions we went over today, there are a couple of tables and charts. So for these, you just want to make sure that you read your information carefully and make sure you know what the question is asking exactly. For surveys, uh, in terms of data from surveys, so you know that the mean is your average value and it can be skewed by outliers, whereas 
Your median is the 50th percentile and your middle data point 